Hello, I'm Joseph Abruzzo, your Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller. It is my privilege to introduce our amazing clerks team who will be conducting this webinar designed to help you navigate through the Palm Beach County court system. For years, these seminars were conducted at our courthouse locations. Now we're bringing these sessions online so you can watch live and ask questions. This session is being recorded and will be shared on our website, our YouTube channel, and our social media accounts. You can follow us at Clerk PBC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We invite you to go back to the recording of this session if there are any points you need to review again. Thank you for watching. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, welcome to our monthly workshop series here at the Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller's Office. Um, these workshops are offered through our self-service center um, to assist people who are representing themselves in court on different issues, um, filing different kinds of court cases, or maybe you work um, assisting people with paperwork in, that are representing themselves. And this month, we're going to be talking about sealing or expunging your criminal history records. Just a few um, housekeeping matters before we begin. Um, you can go ahead and chat your questions in the chat box, or um, you can wait until the end of the presentation. We will have a Q&A um, portion, and if you'd like to ask your question out loud. And um, I may not answer your question in the chat until the end. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to see the question and give the presentation, but I'll try to keep an eye out. And if it's um, pertaining to the particular slide that we're on, then I'll try my best to address it then. But otherwise, I will go through the chat questions at the end of the presentation and make sure everyone gets an answer to their questions. Um, you're currently, everybody's muted at the end of the presentation. If you'd like to ask a question that you didn't put in the chat, you can raise your hand and one of our administrators will unmute you. So to give you an overview of what we're going to be covering today, um, I'm going to give you a brief description of the Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller's duties and our self-service center. Then we're going to discuss some of the terms involved in sealing or expunging your criminal history record. We will go over the difference between sealing your record versus expunging it. We will discuss um, the most important part, which is who is eligible to seal or expunge their criminal history record here in the state of Florida. Um, then we'll discuss how you actually apply to get your record sealed or expunged, so the procedural requirements. We'll talk about juvenile expunction and the differences between adult expunction and juvenile expunction and the process for expunging juvenile criminal history records. And then, as I mentioned, we'll have a Q&A session at the end for any of your questions. So if you've been to any of our workshops before, you should now know that the Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller is the trustee of the county's public records, the 15th Circuit's court records, and the county's public funds. One of the things that we're statutorily tasked with doing is providing ministerial procedural assistance to self-represented litigants. Um, we cannot give legal advice, but we can give legal information. We can um, assist people with pre-made forms and explain to them the steps um, along the way in getting their case through the legal system. In our self-service centers, we have over 80 packets with user-friendly forms and instructions from anything from divorce to eviction, small claims, modifying your child support order, and we have some packets on sealing or expunging your criminal history record. We have an adult um, expunction packet, and then we have a juvenile packet that can be used for either juvenile diversion expunction or early juvenile expunction. We're gonna talk about all those different options in this presentation, so you'll know all about them by the end. We also have public access computers where you can research your case, um, see what documents have been filed, go over the docket and see any pending court hearings that you have. We have a navigator program where you can make an appointment for free with one of our navigators and they can actually assist you in filling out these forms for the packets that we provide at the self-service center. And we have notaries, you can provide copies for parties, et cetera. So now that you know a little bit about the services that we provide, we'll get right into sealing or expunging a criminal history record. And before we talk about how to do that, it's important that you understand the 
statutory legal definition of what a criminal history record is, or more importantly, what it's not. So your criminal history record is not the court file. It is all non-judicial records uh, relating to an arrest. And that includes the booking information, any arrest report, the fingerprinting from when you were um, arrested, anything maintained with the criminal justice agency, um, the state attorney's office, the law enforcement agency. When you discuss sealing or expunging a criminal record, the difference between sealing and expunging is that a sealed criminal record is basically confidential to most parties. It is not subject to public records requests. It's unavailable to the general public. There are still some government agencies that um, and judicial partners that have access to the record in its entirety. And in this presentation, we will go over who those agencies and individuals are. But for the most part, it is confidential, but the records themselves are not destroyed. When you expunge a criminal record, it is actually physically destroyed. So it is unavailable both to the public and to those government agencies. However, those government agencies and individuals that we're gonna discuss that can see sealed records will still know that your record existed but was expunged. The general public, however, will not. And as I mentioned, we're gonna discuss what the exceptions are. But when you seal or expunge your criminal record and you have a court order that either seals or expunge your records, that means uh, when you're filling out a job application, for the most part, application for a college, a graduate program, um, many different things, you can um, deny or not acknowledge the arrest when it asks you that question, have you ever been arrested? Um, you can deny that if your record has been sealed or expunged. You can say no with a few exceptions. If you're applying for a job with uh, a criminal justice agency, so you want to work for the FBI, anything related to the school system, so um, the school board, uh, a local government agency that licenses child care, or if you're applying for a job or a license with the Department of Children and Families, um, the Department of Education, um, and the agencies listed here, Department of Health, Elderly Affair, or DJJ, the Department of Juvenile Justice. Um, if you're seeking a license with the Division of Insurance, or if you're applying to be a court-appointed guardian, um, those agencies would be able to see sealed records and would be able to be told that expunged records at one point existed. In addition, um, if you're a defendant in a criminal prosecution, um, the court has access to those records. Um, if you're applying to be an attorney in the state of Florida and you're applying as a candidate for the Florida bar, you do have to disclose this information. Or if you're applying for, if you've had a record sealed and then later you're applying to have it expunged, then obviously um, the court can see the sealed records re relating to that expunction. Um, in addition, you can always see um, your sealed records, your attorney of record if you have one, and the judge assigned to your case can also see those records. Other than those exceptions, which are basically federal agencies, law enforcement agencies, agencies dealing with minor children or the elderly, um, revealing the existence of a sealed or expunged record to anyone other than those agencies is actually a first degree misdemeanor. And I'd like to note, because I mentioned at the beginning that your criminal history record does not include court records. They are non-judicial records. So if you're, the judge grants the expansion of your criminal history records, we do not physically destroy the file. However, it does have the effect, if it was otherwise not confidential, of making it um, a confidential record. And we would not disclose that record to anyone that wasn't one of those agencies that is accepted from the expunction, nor would it be available on our public records search on our website. 
So since I mentioned that when you expunge a record, you actually destroy it, whereas when you seal it, it's basically just making it non-viewable and non-public. And um, why would you choose to seal versus expunge? Most people would think that you would want to just expunge the record. Well, there are some situations where you would be eligible for a sealing, but not for an expunging. Um, and that is why you would start with sealing the records. So in a minute, we're going to talk about um, what makes you eligible to either seal or expunge criminal records as an adult. And then later on in the presentation, we'll talk about juvenile charges. But basically, to simplify it into two scenarios, if the charges against you were dropped prior to the commencement of a trial, or there, there were no charges pressed at all, you were arrested, but they decided not to prosecute, um, then you can automatically expunge the charge as an apply to expunge the charge as an adult. However, if they were not dismissed and the trial held, uh, the trial was held or at least began and either adjudication was withheld or it was dismissed after the starting of the trial, um, but you're otherwise eligible to expunge the charges then you must first apply to have them sealed for 10 years. And if during those 10 years, um, you do not commit any other criminal offenses, then you can apply for the next step of having those charges expunged. And as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about how to do that in this presentation shortly. So who is eligible to have their criminal records sealed or expunged? I'm gonna preface this with, it's quite narrow in the state of Florida. So I think sometimes people have the impression that even if you were found guilty of certain charges that you can have them expunged, it's an opportunity for a second chance. And it may be that in some states, that may be the case. Um, these laws regarding sealing or expungement are different from state to state. So what we're going over today is just for the state of Florida. And in Florida, it is a somewhat narrow um, opportunity, at least for adults. It is broader for juveniles, and we'll cover that later in the presentation. But for adults, basically, if charges were pressed, you cannot have been found guilty of any of the charges that you're trying to seal or expunge. So when you're trying to seal or expunge a charge, it's either that you were found not guilty or that uh, there was some sort of diversion and adjudication was withheld. And so there wasn't a charge of guilty entered. There was some sort of uh, plea and past deal made prior to the uh, adjudication of guilt or the charges were dropped altogether. And um, you want to seal the records relating to that arrest and you want to be able to deny that arrest when applying for um, jobs or certain programs. So if you were found guilty, even if you were put on probation, uh, you know, there are other circumstances after the adjudication of guilt, for the court ordered sealing or expunging of records, you would not be eligible. And I make that disclaimer court ordered because there are some types of expungements that we will not be discussing today in detail because you do not apply for them yourself with the court. But there are, for example, expungement exceptions for crimes ar arising out of being a victim of human trafficking, um, self-defense, stand, stand your ground expungements, and things of that nature that you actually have to work with the state attorney's office, with the prosecuting agency to apply for expunging of those records. And we're not going over that today in our workshop. We're going over expungement that you would apply for yourself and would be ordered by the court. So when I give you these eligibility requirements, I'm speaking to the court ordered expungement. And if you think that you might be eligible for any of those other types of expungement, then I would speak to the prosecuting agency involved in the case to see if you are eligible. So for this court ordered expungement, you cannot have been adjudicated guilty of any of the charges and you can't have been adjudicated guilty of other charges stemming from the same arrest. So, if you were charged with several things from one incident that you were arrested for and 
you were found guilty of one of the charges and not guilty of the other, then you would not be able to um, seal or expunge that charge either. Also, most importantly in Florida, you basically get one bite at the apple. It's technically two because you can have one juvenile expunction and one adult expunction per, per lifetime. But if you've already sealed or expunged a criminal record, you cannot five years later seal or expunge a future criminal record. With the exception of if you were eligible for sealing and not expunging, then 10 years later, you can apply to expunge the record that you previously sealed. Once again, there are exceptions like with the human trafficking or other types of expansion, but for this um, individually applied court ordered expansion, you get one per lifetime. Um, if you pled guilty or no contest and the adjudication was withheld, you may still be able to seal or expunge your record, but there is a list of crimes that under Florida statute, if you pled guilty or no contest, even if adjudication was withheld and there was some sort of diversion, um, would make you ineligible for sealing or expunging. Um, we have the list of crimes on our website in the toolbox where this workshop is located. And um, we put the, the link is in the chat right now to that page where you can find it. I'm gonna show it to you now, but it is a long um, list with about 39 offenses categories. So we're not gonna go into too much detail, um, but there are some disqualifying charges. Now, if you were found not guilty, you pled not guilty, you were found not guilty, you can still apply to seal or expunge these charges. But if you pled guilty, or were found guilty of these charges on this list, then you would not be eligible. Um, and we just put a link to this, this handout with the disqualifying charges in the chat. Okay. It mostly includes violent crimes, some more serious drug trafficking crimes and some sexual offense crimes, but you can look at the detailed um, list at your leisure after the presentation. So, and, and remember, these are the eligibility for adult expungion. We're going to talk about how you can expunge a charge that you were charged with as a juvenile through the juvenile delinquency system. And those rules and eligibility requirements are broader and they include a lot more individuals with a lot more offenses. So we'll get to that shortly. Um, so if you determine that you are eligible, then the first step is going to be filling out an application for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. So this process is basically going to be broken into two major steps with some sub steps in between that we'll talk. But step one is all your interaction with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And step two is all your interaction with the court. So we're going to start with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement because the very first thing that you would need to do if you wanted to see or expunge a criminal record is apply for a certificate of eligibility with the FDLE. And the certificate of eligibility is an application that you have to fill out. And there is a $75 fee that you have to pay to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to obtain a certificate of eligibility. In our seal and expunge packets that we have in the self-service center, we have all the paperwork that you would need for the FDLE, as well as the paperwork that you would need for the court. So both um, the forms for both steps are included in our packet if you purchase them from our office. And you can purchase those in any of our courthouse locations or online on our website at self-service link that's in the chat. Um, we do the, those forms are available online. Um, so for the FDLE application, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, you're gonna complete section, everybody completes section A of the application. That form needs to be signed in the presence of a notary. If you're seeking to expunge your record, not just seal it, then there is a section B that has to be filled out by the prosecuting agency, the state attorney's office. And once you've completed that application, you have to obtain a copy, a certified copy of the final disposition for the charges in your case. And that's obtained from the clerk's office because we keep all the court records. Um, and 
You need a certified copy of the final disposition that shows the FDLE whether the charges were dropped, dismissed, um, what you pled, and if the trial was held, what was the adjudication of the court. If the charge that you're trying to seal or expunge is a misdemeanor, you can obtain that from our county criminal department. If you come here to our main courthouse, that's on the second floor. Um, and if it was a felony, then you're gonna go to the circuit criminal department to obtain a certified copy. And here at our main courthouse, that's located on the third floor. And just to show you what it looks like, that is the FDLE's uh, law enforcement application. Um, there is a link in the chat where you could download this application yourself. Um, you are always going to complete this first page section, which is section A. Um, you're going to sign that in the presence of a notary. On the second page, if you're doing an expunction, you're going to have the state attorney complete and sign your eligibility on page two. And then the next step is you have to get your fingerprints done. And the application includes a fingerprinting form that they specifically want you to use when you get your fingerprints done. Um, and there's some instructions there and the address where you're going to mail this whole application to when you are done. So, and when, if you make an appointment with our navigators, a free appointment for assistance, um, we can help you fill out the section A of the application in addition to the court related forms that you would have to fill out. Section B has to be filled out and signed by the state attorney's office. So we cannot assist you with that part. Um, for fingerprinting in our packet or on the FDLE website, which is linked in the chat, there's a list of agencies that can do your fingerprint. It can be a law enforcement agency. So the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, for example, if you reside here in Palm Beach County, or it can be a private vendor that is approved. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a list of those um, agencies on the website. Okay, Oops. go back a second. Okay. Once you've got your fingerprints done, you have filled out the application and gotten notarized, and the state attorney, if applicable, has filled out their part of the application. You're going to mail this whole application along with that certified copy of the final disposition for the charges you're trying to seal or expunge. And the $75 fee made out to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to that address that I showed you on those application instructions. And then you wait. And how long do you wait? Well, that varies. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement part waiting for the certificate of eligibility probably is the longest part in this process. Um, you usually get the court date faster, um, but you can check their website for their current processing times. I did check right before um, this workshop. And so um, there, there is a link in the chat to this page of their website, the Seal and Expunge homepage. And as you can see right now, it's saying that the processing time for them to determine eligibility is 12 weeks from the date a completed application packet is received. So right now you're waiting about three months to get that certificate of eligibility back in the mail from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And you cannot um, apply to the court until you have that certificate of eligibility. That certificate of eligibility has to be attached to your application so this is the part where you're going to um, wait. Once you have received that certificate of eligibility in the mail, then that step two of the process, which is applying to the court, begins. So you've got your certificate of eligibility. You're going to fill out a petition to seal or a petition to expunge your criminal history record an affidavit in support of your petition where it has you answer some questions and that is where you would explain to the court why you are requesting what you're requesting. There is a filing fee of $42 with the court when you apply to seal or expunge your criminal record. And you're going to file that into the case for the charges that you are trying to seal or expunge. So on your application, your petition, and your affidavit with the court, you're going to use the same case number that was assigned to your criminal case. And if it was a misdemeanor, you're going to file it in the county criminal department. And if it was a felony, you're going to file it with the circuit criminal department. And now when we get to the juvenile 
um, expungement, you'll see that's filed in the juvenile department. Um, you're going to use that case number on your petition and affidavit. If your case was filed as a felony and later downfiled to a misdemeanor, you have two case numbers. And it is important that you write both case numbers on your petition. Now, that certificate of eligibility that you waited for very patiently, it does have an expiration date. It's only good for 12 months from issuance because remember, they did a background check, um, your fingerprints were run, the state attorney may have attested that you don't have any other charges or, or um, convictions that would make you ineligible and that information could change. So that certificate is not good forever. So once you get that certificate in the mail, you wanna follow up with this next step. Otherwise your record will not be sealed or expunged. So once you file your petition, in some, I'm gonna put a disclaimer here. In some cases, the, the, the clerk is always gonna forward your petition to the court. In some cases, the judicial assistant for the judge will assign a hearing date to your case and will contact you with the hearing date. However, these things change and judges rotate in and out. So what I advise everyone to do is to go on the 15th Circuit website, which we will have a link to at the end of the presentation, and go to the divisional page for the judge assigned to your case and read their divisional instructions as to how they want a hearing for a sealing or expunging to be set. It may be that some judges are using the online scheduling system and you have to go to that website to pick a date. It may be that the judicial assistant is gonna keep the calendar and set the hearing. Um, and you just wanna make sure that you follow the steps that that judge requires. Now, remember that criminal judges you know, unlike some civil judges, um, they usually have an attorneys, they usually have attorneys um, representing the state or the parties in their case. They have state attorneys, public defenders, or private defense attorneys. So seal and expunge is one of the few times where people appear before them where they don't have an attorney to do these steps for you. So if you are representing yourself, that judge is gonna expect you to find out how you set hearings before them and, and get that set. So that's why it's always good to check and make sure that the, uh, whatever division your case is assigned to, how you need to set the hearing. Once you do have that hearing date in your seal and expunge packet, there is a form called the notice of hearing form. You're going to write the date, time and location of your hearing on that notice of hearing form. And then it has to be served on certain parties. So the law requires that you mail a copy of that notice of hearing to the prosecuting authority, so the state attorney's office, the arresting authority, so whoever arrested you for the charge that you're trying to seal or expunge, whether it be the sheriff's office or the police department for a certain city, and you have to mail a copy to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Now, I do not represent people at these hearings, but I have been told by um, some parties that we have given the paperwork to and have gone to the hearing, that usually um, most of these agencies do not show up to the hearing, particularly the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, but they still have to be noticed, even if they choose uh, not to show up. If the judge does not see that you have a completed a notice of hearing form with that certificate of service filed in your case, the judge will not hear your case the date of your hearing because you did not notify the other parties involved in your case. So you wanna make sure you fill out that notice of hearing, you mail it to the appropriate agencies. The second page of that notice of hearing has a certificate of service where you say the date that you mailed it to the parties and that you file that in your case before your hearing date so that the court knows that. And you don't wanna file it in your case the day before your hearing because not only will it not show on the docket because it takes a couple of days for things to, when you file it with the clerk's office to show up, um, but depending on when you mailed it, the court may determine that it wasn't enough time and the parties didn't actually get noticed before the hearing date. So uh, the good idea is right when you get the hearing date to go ahead and complete and mail out that notice of hearing so that there's plenty of time prior to your hearing date and then parties were properly noticed. And most importantly, you've done all this hard work. Don't miss your hearing. It's very important that you attend your hearing. You're pretty much gonna have to start all over again if you miss it or file some sort of motion to get a reset for hearing. Um, so you wanna show up to your hearing 
and you want to bring a blank order to seal or expunge your criminal history record to court. We have a court approved order in our packet. You can bring that one with you. As I mentioned, remember the judges are used to having attorneys before them in these criminal cases. And so um, they're not gonna volunteer to draft this order for you. You bring the order, they will complete and sign it. Then you can, um, it'll be filed and the clerk will mail the copy of the final order to the agencies listed on the order. So we will actually mail it once once your criminal history record is ordered, sealed or expunged, our office will mail it to the state attorney's office, to the arresting agency and to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Okay. So once you make it to that step, then your criminal history will be ordered, sealed or expunged, depending on what you requested. Before we get to the q and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difference between a juvenile expunction and um, an adult expunction. So if you're trying to seal or expunge a criminal history record that you incurred as a juvenile, so the language is a little different. You were adjudicated delinquent. You were not um, found guilty or not guilty. It would be either you were not or you were adjudicated delinquent. Um, there are certain scenarios where your juvenile criminal history records are automatically expunged under Florida law without you having to do anything. Once again, these are your non-judicial criminal history records. The law says that at age 21, if you had a charge as a juvenile and you were not classified as a serious or habitual juvenile offender, and you were not committed to a juvenile correction facility or juvenile history, uh, excuse me, your juvenile prison, your non-judicial juvenile criminal history records will be automatically expunged at the age of 21. If you were classified as a serious or habitual juvenile offender or committed to a juvenile correction facility or prison, then that would occur at age 26, assuming after that you did not commit any additional offenses as a juvenile or as an adult. So you do not qualify for that automatic, you don't have to apply expansion if as a minor you were adjudicated as an adult for a forcible felony, after turning 18 and as an adult, you were charged or convicted of a forcible felony prior to the destruction of your juvenile record, so prior to turning 21 or 26, depending on your circumstances, or if you were adjudicated delinquent for committing certain sex offenses on or after July 1st, 2007. At the end of this presentation, we have a link to the Florida statutes um, where you can read what those certain offenses are to see if you would be eligible for the automatic juvenile expansion or not. For any of the above circumstances, your juvenile record would not automatically be expunged. It would merge into your adult record. Okay. So why would anyone fill out an application for a juvenile expansion? Well, because they do not want to wait until they're 21 or 26. Um, you see it a lot for juveniles that um, are applying to college. Um, and they want to get this expunged prior to that. And so they're still, you know, 17, 18 or 19, and they might be applying and they want it expunged prior to their 21st or 26th birthday. So we have a petition to expunge juvenile criminal history records. And there's two types of juvenile criminal history records that you can apply to expunge yourself and that we have the paperwork for. One is a juvenile diversion expunction and one is an early, early juvenile expunction. And I'll explain to you the difference. Uh, for a juvenile diversion expunction, you're eligible if as part of your um, adjudication of delinquency, you completed an authorized juvenile diversion program. So you were ordered to participate in a juvenile diversion program and you successfully completed it. Uh, right now, as the law is read, the charges, the juvenile charges must involve a non-violent misdemeanor, but it's being expanded. There's new legislation that was passed this legislative session. It goes into effect on July 1st, so very soon. That does include some felonies as well, as long as it's not a forcible felony. So as I mentioned, we have that link to the statute and you want to 
read um, the changes to see if you would now be eligible. But they are expanding what's eligible for a juvenile diversion expunction um, effective July 1st. Unlike in an adult case, there's no requirement that the charges had to be dismissed or dropped prior to the commencement of a trial to be eligible for a juvenile diversion expunction. You just have to have successfully completed the juvenile diversion program, and you can have no other juvenile delinquencies or criminal charges before or after the offense. So this is someone who made one mistake and was charged, but hasn't had any offenses after this, okay? The juvenile diversion expunction, you can actually apply to it even before you turn 18, but you will need the assistance of a parent or guardian if you're doing it before you turn 18. After 18, you can do it on your own. The other juvenile expunction that I mentioned is the seal and uh, the early juvenile expunction. Um, these are for juveniles between the ages of 18 or 21. Actually, I say 18 and 21. You can be older than 21 and apply it because remember some juvenile um, charges are not expunged until you are 26 in certain scenarios. Just like with the diversion expunction for juveniles, there's no requirement that the charges be dismissed or dropped prior to the commencement of proceedings for expunction. So you don't have to do that thing where you seal it for 10 years first. You can go straight to the expunction. Um, you do have to be at least 18 for this expunction. And you must not have been charged or found to have committed any other criminal offenses within the last five years before you apply. Both juvenile expunctions do require the state attorney to fill out a portion of the application to the FDLE. So the state attorney must sign off on your application. So because you're expunging, so that section B needs to be filled out by the state attorney for any kind of juvenile expunction. Procedurally, the process is pretty similar. Okay. The only difference is that I want to point out is that there is no fee if you're applying with the FDLE for a certificate of eligibility under the juvenile diversion expunction program. But for early juvenile expunction, it is the same $75 fee that the adults um, fill out. But you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fill out the application. There's a separate juvenile application, which you can get from the FDLE seal and expunge page on their website or in our packet. Um, you're gonna complete section A, the state attorney is gonna complete section B. If you're under 18, your parent or guardian must also sign the application. And then you're gonna get your fingerprints done and you're gonna mail it to the FDLE. You're gonna get your final disposition, just like for an adult expunction. All of it gets mailed to the FDLE and you wait for that certificate of eligibility. Once you get that certificate of eligibility, the process also mirrors the adult process in that you have to fill out the petition to expunge and the affidavit in support. The only difference is that the paperwork says juvenile and that you're gonna file it in the juvenile department, which is in our unified family court. If you're here at the main courthouse, it's on the third floor. The filing fee is the same, it is $42. We're going to forward it to the judicial assistant. I did tell you to check the divisional website to see how your judge would like the hearing set, and you should still do that. But for most of the juvenile cases, the, the court is going to set the hearing, and um, they're going to notify you of that hearing date. And then you're going to attend the hearing and bring that order just like you would do for the adult charge. So the major difference between the juvenile expansion and the adult is that the eligibility requirements are a lot broader, so you, you don't, the cases don't have to be dismissed prior to the commencement of trial to go straight to expunction. Um, it includes more charges that are eligible. If you did a diversion program, you could be eligible even if um, you were adjudicated delinquent. Um, and that it gets processed through the juvenile department. Even if you're now an adult, the juvenile department is still gonna hear the petition for sealing and expunging your criminal your juvenile record. And I just wanted to clarify, since I, I've mentioned many times that it does not include judicial records. By law in Florida, judicial records, so your juvenile delinquency court files, are confidential and not viewable by the public. That's a little different than they don't exist. They're confidential, so the public can't see them. 
with a few exceptions. So under Florida statute, the court, obviously the judge and their staff, law enforcement, the Department of Juvenile Justice, Department of Corrections, um, the school superintendents and their designees, and any professional or community agency that is treating the juvenile, the juvenile, their parents, their legal custodians, and their attorneys can see the file. But the general public cannot be uh, cannot see a juvenile delinquency record, nor make a public records request to see those records. Um, based on expansion of, of certain victim rights uh, laws that exist right now, the victim of an offense or their next of kin uh, can be allowed access to these juvenile delinquency records and um, individuals can petition the court, file a motion to access certain juvenile records, explain their reasons, and the judge can order access to the file in limited circumstances, but that would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Otherwise, we're gonna keep those records confidential even if they're not sealed or expunged. So I know we've talked about a lot of different uh, websites. Those links are all in the chat. This PowerPoint presentation is on our website at mypalmbeachclerk.com on our self-service page. So you can access the presentation at any time. We are recording this, um, as we mentioned, when you entered the room, we are recording this presentation today. So if you miss part of it, if you wanna rehear it, if you wanna share it with others, um, it does take us a little while, um, but we will get it on our website and you can view it there on our self-service page. And we have some links to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement here, um, a link to the statutes that I've been referencing throughout the presentation, to the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice, to the 50th Circuit website for those divisional instructions on how to set your hearing, and to our website where you can see the PowerPoint presentation, the list of charges, etc. So now that I have talked at you continuously for 45 minutes, I'm going to open it up for any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I don't see any in the chat, but if you'd like to ask now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, you can raise your hand or you can type it into the chat, whatever you're more comfortable with. And thank you everybody for coming today. Right, I see got one question. Yeah, let me just go ahead and unmute. Okay, you're unmuted, sir, if you want to go ahead and, or, or ma'am, I can't um, see you. Sorry, yes, thank you very much for an excellent presentation. I just wanted to understand, um, in relation to the paperwork, uh, no, if it's a felony or a downgradable or downgraded to a misdemeanor, you said use both case numbers, but where are you supposed to file it at that point in time? So the case numbers, you only have to write on the petition that you're gonna file with the court to seal or expunge. So you've already gotten your certificate of eligibility for FDLE, you're ready to petition to the court to get your court order. On those petitions, it asks you for your case number and you're gonna write in the case of a downgraded um, to a misdemeanor, you're gonna write both case number on the section of the form that says case number and you file it in the court where the charges were pressed, where your case was. So if it was here in the 15th circuit in Palm Beach County, you're gonna file it here. But if you're attending this workshop and you were arrested and prosecuted in Miami-Dade County or Broward, then you would file it in, in those, at those courthouses, whatever county where you were actually, um, the charges were prosecuted. And would it be circuit civil? No, it wouldn't be circuit civil. It'd be just criminal. If it was downgraded to a misdemeanor, you are going to charge it in the county. You're going to file it in the county criminal department, but they still want you to reference that felony case number. County. Um, county. So a felony will be will be filed in the circuit criminal department. A misdemeanor will be filed in the county criminal department, and a juvenile offense will be filed in um, our juvenile delinquency department. But if it was downgraded, charge, file it in the department where the last charge, where the charge that was actually pursued was um, held. Thank you very much. No problem. Do you have a few other questions? Hi, 
Hi, sir. Hi. Samsung. Hi. <laughs> how, you, how you doing, ma'am? Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find a ramp to get off to join the first part, but you did say this is being recorded. And yes. And I'll uh, pull it back up. Question to you. Um, it's kind of difficult for me. To, I'm, I'm picking up on this, but is it do they assist you if you like, if I go to the particular jurisdictions down to the circuit court or to the courthouse, would they direct you in the right direction uh, as far as helping you get the expungement done? I, I hope so. If, if you, if it was Palm Beach County, you can come to our self-service center. We'll help you determine what forms you need and we can assist you with filling them out and tell you the steps. We can't give you advice. So if you have right, if any right. doubts about whether you're eligible, you may need to speak to an attorney, but we can definitely help you with the process and with the forms. Um, if you come to our self-service center, which we have here in West Palm Beach on the first floor of the courthouse, and we also have a self-service center at our Delray South Branch Courthouse. I, I don't know how the other counties might have it set up, um, but most counties do at least have the forms for the process available. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I think uh, Vanessa has a question. We can... Yes, Vanessa, hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, just quick question. If you were arrested on charges that were dismissed, they were pretty erroneous then you can still and destroy you don't you have can to expunge, you can expunge yes expunge, if you were okay. arrested on charges and they were and the, as an adult and they were dismissed prior to any trial commencing you can go straight to expunge you don't have to seal them okay if so were, if i'm sorry so if we went to the court and the judge basically just said why did the they arrest you did the officer flip a coin and dismissed everything because they were pretty erroneous then you can get it expunged. Yes, well, you'll want to get a copy of your final disposition because if it was dismissed prior to the trial commencing, so yeah. maybe at an arraignment, or, you know, it's one of the procedures for no trial. prior to that, pre-trial, okay. then yes. If the trial had already commenced, you may have to, in certain circumstances, seal it first. Yeah, but no, with no trial, it was just your initial court, you know, to show up at court. From the charges okay. and well, I can't give individual advice, but based on what you're telling me so far, it does seem like you could um, apply. Now, remember, when you apply for expungement, you have to send go to the state attorney's office to get them to sign it. So they're ultimately going to tell you, yes, you are eligible to send this to the FDLE or not. Awesome. And then from there forth, you can deny that arrest. And it's like it never existed when you're working with. When you're applying for things, with a few exceptions that I mentioned in the presentation, like if you're applying for certain federal or state government agencies, but for the most part, yes. Okay, all right, good. And if the officer did some IA time from internal affairs and that really backs it up and helps, no. <laughs> I don't know if the court will look at that, but definitely they'll look that it was dismissed then. Awesome, thank you. No problem. I think Mr. John Boykin had a question. Yes, hold on just a minute. One second, Mr. Boykin, you're still muted. I'm gonna She's ask gonna you unmute. to unmute. There we go. Hi, sir. How are you today? Fine, thank you. I just wanted to know if there was any CLE credit for this. Uh... <laughs> so there isn't for this particular presentation. This is part of our self-service series. So we had originally designed it for um, the public, not attorneys. However, um, we just recently got approved to be CLE providers. So we are going to be doing some CLEs. So we're going to see if we can get this recording um, available in the future and um, CLE credit. So we will let you know. <laughs> we, we have just recently, last month, started a CLE series. And this is part of our self-service center series. So normally it's pro se litigants, but I know I have some attorneys here. So um, we're working on getting some CLE approval. Okay, thank you. No problem. Anybody else? I think, um, yes, ma'am, you're unmuted now. Yeah, just one follow-up question. If the um, the um, misdemeanor conviction occurred like 30 years ago, are there any exceptions to the 10 year waiting time uh, if you seal the record and then have to wait the 10 years to expunge? 
when I read the statute, if, you, if you're not eligible for one of those other types of expungements that I mentioned you have to do with the state attorney's office, I, it does not state any exceptions based on the passage of time. So I do not believe so. I believe that the 10 years begins when you actually petition for the sealing. It's not 10 years from when um, the charges were prosecuted, but from when you petitioned for sealing. Right. Thank you very much. No problem. Then. Anyone else? I don't think I see any raised hands. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Um, as we mentioned, shortly we will have the this presentation available for viewing online. Um, we've got all the links in the chat, but they're also available on our website. Stay tuned on our website and on our um, social media pages. Um, for next month, we will have we, we have one of these every month on different topics. So um, some of the avail uh, videos available on our website already is we had a divorce, um, we've had eviction, and we've had a tax deed sales presentation, um, and this seal and expunge. So stay tuned shortly. Uh, we'll be announcing what next month's topic is, and we hope you can join us. And um, for those Attorneys, um, keep an eye out as well because we'll be posting a CLE. We'll be doing a CLE next month. Uh, we've already had a CLE on um, reading your child support ledger and some of the technology available here at the clerk's office. And we hope to have another CLE presentation next month as well. So thank you for joining us. Everybody have a good afternoon. Thank you.